Welcome to the Niche Podcast, your weekly rundown of the biotech, clinical research, and life science industries. I'm your host, Dr. Noah Goodson. This week, Genentech's next tech. GSK divests to invest. Bristol Myers Squibb checks oncology. Cassava Sciences raises capital. Liptio gets expanded FDA approval. And Hyperfine turns on Hyperdrive. Genentech has been releasing a series of results for their next-gen ocular injectable verisimab. Last week, they put out more details and connected the dots. Verisimab has shown significant benefit in combating both diabetic macular edema, DME, and age-related macular degeneration, NAMD. For years, DME and NAMD have been treated by VEGF-inhibiting injectables that are either monthly or bi-weekly. Having spent a couple hundred hours in an ophthalmology clinic, I can attest firsthand to the burden these therapies place on patients. Not only are monthly or bi-weekly intraocular injections incredibly uncomfortable, they also increase the probability of patient non-compliance through missed appointments. This, in turn, decreases the effectiveness of extant therapies, including Genentech's own Lucentis. The advancement for Ferisimab is that between 40 and 50% of patients only need one injection every four months, with 70% needing them every three months or greater. The bispecific antibody works by inhibiting both angiopoietin-2 and VEGF-A. This inhibition stabilizes blood vessels, improving vision, and decreasing retinal degradation from the underlying diseases. With multiple trials behind Ferisimab, expect FDA applications for DME and NAMD to move through this year. While it won't take over clinic overnight, this will likely be a leading treatment for both diseases in the near term. It's worth noting that other therapies are in development in the same space, including injectables, oral therapies, implants, and gene therapies. Assuming ferisimab gets the green light, there may be significant alternatives in the mid to long term. GSK has reached an agreement with Sandoz, a Novartis division, to sell off a chunk of its antibiotic business in a deal valued at $500 million. GSK is attempting to clean up their portfolio and get movement from its extensive R&D endeavors. Sandoz will get control of the cephalosporins line, including Zenat, Zenicef, and Fortum. These are off-patent drugs with major global distribution and recognition. But GSK sees value in the future, not in maintenance and distribution of common treatments. The deal involves $350 million cash payment and $150 million in milestones. For GSK, this gives them increased focus. For Sandoz, this gives them increased market control of generics. Bristol-Myers Squibb, BMS, has made a deal worth up to $1.3 billion with molecular templates to develop next-gen oncology therapies. Molecular templates has developed an engineered toxin body, ETB, platform, which works in some way through the and I quote, forced internalization of target receptors and enzymatic inactivation of ribosomes. So basically they have some centralized mechanism of cellular function and they're identifying targets to apply ETB to. Now that might be a misread on my part, but their pipeline is based on ETB and covers a variety of targets with their lead candidate heading into phase two as a CD20 monotherapy. BMS probably sees this deal as portfolio expanding. They only put out $70 million up front, with the other 95% of the offer tied up in milestone achievements. For an up-and-coming company like Molecular Templates, this gives them big-name legitimacy and the capital needed to push into further clinical development. Developing a new product in the biopharma space is incredibly challenging. There are design barriers, capital to raise, and regulatory hurdles. The SCOPE method provides consultative solutions to navigate industry-specific challenges. We've helped companies pivot into new therapeutic spaces, change trajectory through clinical insights, and empowered CEOs with tools to transform their data into stories that raise capital. The SCOPE method will help you develop data-driven, strategic processes. Find out more at thescopemethod.com. Cassava Sciences has raised $200 million in a registered direct offering to continue development of their Alzheimer's therapy. 
Similar film is designed to treat Alzheimer's by restoring the shape of altered filament A scaffolding protein, which can be impacted by a beta plaque buildup in the brain. A 2017 paper showed that simophilin can restore filament A shape and undercut the course of Alzheimer's in a mouse model. Now, like many Alzheimer's therapies in the graveyard, they have promising serological and safety data from early trials, along with animal model results. With major players like Biogen's aducanumab likely on track for approval this summer, it's hard to know if cassava has the capital to compete. However, Perhaps with some ultra-promising phase 2 results, they'll be able to garner more significant backing for a phase 3 ramp up. Sanofi has received FDA approval for Libtio, a PD-1 inhibitor immunotherapy for the treatment of advanced basal cell carcinoma. Libtio has been on the market for certain forms of squamous cell carcinoma since 2018. Basal cell carcinoma is the most frequently occurring skin cancer globally. While numerous frontline treatments exist, the cancer often grows resistant over time. Libtio adds a significant second line of defense through a distinct mechanism of action. Like other PD-1 inhibitors, more targets are probably in the pipeline, as Sanofi seeks approval for as many indications as possible. Hyperfine has raised a $90 million Series D to aggressively scale up their commercial pipeline. A year ago, they received FDA clearance for their portable head and neck MRI machine. This new capital should send them into hyperdrive. The MRI is a massive move forward in imaging and diagnostics. It can be wheeled directly to a patient's bedside, set up and run in minutes using a normal outlet, and provide rapid diagnostics right to an iPad. I firmly expect to see these showing up in hospitals and clinics around the world. It's almost literally a no-brainer addition to diagnostic, palliative, and surgical workflows. It cannot and should not replace full-scale devices, but will be a valuable asset across clinics. Depending on how reimbursements are structured for this device, it could pay for itself in a week of use. It's no surprise that Hyperfine oversubscribed their funding round. Thanks for joining me on the Niche Podcast, your weekly summary of the top news in the biotech, clinical trials, and life science industries. You can learn more at thenichepod.com or find us on your favorite podcast app. Like, comment, subscribe, and most of all, share with your friends. If you like what you hear, please rate and review. It really helps us. Once again, I'm Dr. Noah Goodson, and I'll see you next week. 